My Weird School, Book Number Four. Miss Hana is Bananas, written by Dan Gutman, pictures by Jim Pellot. Chapter Six: The Museum of Hanging Garbage. For a few days, I was the star of the school. No kid had ever been inside the teachers' lounge. I was probably the first one in the history of the world. Everybody wanted to know about the incredible things I saw in the teachers' lounge. Kids were even offering me candy to tell them. I didn't want to tell them the teachers' lounge was just a boring old room where the teachers sat around eating lunch. I didn't want to lie either. So I just told them that the teachers blindfolded me, and said they would torture me if I ever revealed what went on in the teachers' lounge. It was cool. Our next art class wasn't an art class at all. Miss Hana took us on a field trip to a museum. I hate museums. Museums are boring. Why don't we ever take a field trip to a cool place like a skateboard park? I asked Ryan on the bus ride over to the museum. What's so great about skateboard parks? Andrea asked from the seat in front of me. Well, for one thing, you're not there. I said. Ryan laughed. Andrea made a mean face at me. I like museums," she said. "My mom takes me to museums all the time. Too bad she doesn't leave you there," I said. Ryan laughed. We walked around the museum for about a million hundred hours. Miss Hana was all excited. She just about ran from room to room, telling us about all the wonderful art. It was horrible and boring, and I was hungry and my legs were tired. I looked for a place to sit down. There were some big boxes of soup cans in the corner, and I went to take a rest on them. But as soon as I sat down, all these loud bells started ringing, and guards came running over. One of them was blowing a whistle, and he started yelling at me. "Get up!" he shouted. "You can't sit there." "Okay, okay," I said, getting up fast. "I'll sit someplace else." "What's the big deal?" I wondered. The guard looked like he was going to arrest me or something. Luckily, Miss Hannah ran over and rescued me. I asked her what I did. And she told me that I had sat on some art. That's art? I asked. I thought it was boxes of soup. It's modern art, she said. That is a famous sculpture that is worth millions of dollars. It looked like soup boxes to me. Miss Hana told me to remember that art is everywhere. So. I should be careful what I sat on. She put her arm around me and kept it there for the rest of the time we were in the museum. We walked around, and she kept pointing out the beautiful artwork all over the place. Look at this! She kept saying, "Isn't it marvelous?" We stopped in front of a painting. It was just a bunch of lines and squares and box shapes. It was really stupid, isn't it wonderful? Miss Hana said. It's called Broadway Boogie Woogie. My little sister could paint that with her eyes closed. I said. The next room didn't have any paintings on the walls at all. But all kinds of junk was hanging from the ceiling. Can anybody tell me what these are? Miss Hana asked us. That must be the museum's garbage, 
I told her. When my family goes camping, we hang our garbage from a tree, so the bears and raccoons don't get it. They don't have bears and raccoons in museums, dumbhead. Andrea said. Those things are called mobiles. That's right, Andrea. Miss Hannah said, and Andrea stuck her tongue out at me. I hate her. They are also called kinetic sculptures. What does that mean? Emily asked. It means it comes from Connecticut. I told her. No, kinetic means movement. Miss Hannah said, "The sculptures can move." Don't tell me that's art," I said, looking at one of those Connecticut things. Not only is this art," Miss Hannah said, "it's a masterpiece. Looks like hanging garbage to me," I said. This museum was the weirdest museum in the history of museums. I was bored and hungry. And I wanted to sit down. Finally, Miss Hanna said we could go outside in the garden and have a snack. Before we leave the museum, she started. Does anybody have any questions? I raised my hand. If all of the stuff in here is art, how do they know what to throw away as garbage? I asked. Do they ever throw the art away by accident and leave the garbage here? How do they know which is which? Everybody laughed, even though I didn't say anything funny. I never did find out how they threw their garbage away. Chapter Seven, Performance Art. There's a garden in the back of the Museum of Hanging Garbage. We went out there. And Miss Hanna gave out pretzels and punch to all of us. She said we could run around and burn off some energy. We were munching the pretzels when Michael noticed a statue at the other end of the garden. It was a statue of a guy. He was dressed in a raincoat, and he was holding an umbrella. The cool thing was that the statue guy was painted gold from head to toe. Now that is cool, I said. A bunch of people were standing around in a circle, looking at the statue guy. Hey, wait a minute, Michael said. I just saw that statue guy move. He did not, I said. Did too, said Michael. I went over to the statue guy. There was a hat on the ground in front of him, and there was money in it. That was weird. If it was a statue, why would anybody give it money? The statue guy wasn't moving at all. I walked around him real slow. I said "boo" to him. He didn't move. I wanted to touch him. To see if he was a real statue, but I was scared. I looked in the statue guy's eyes. They sure looked real, but he wasn't moving a muscle. See, I told you, I said to Michael, it's just a statue. But just as I said it, the statue guy suddenly picked up his hand and put it on my head. I screamed and jumped about three feet in the air. All the people who were watching started to laugh, even though there wasn't anything funny about it. I hadn't been so scared since I went to this haunted mansion on Halloween, and all these zombies were jumping out from behind the walls. When that statue guy moved, I thought I was going to die. Miss Hanna came over and put her arm around me. See, that's art too, AJ," she said as she put some money in the statue guy's hat. 
This man has turned himself into a work of art. It's just like I always tell you. Art is everywhere. This is called performance art. Performance art? Performance art? I think maybe when I grow up, I will paint myself gold and stand around doing nothing but scaring kids all day. That performance art stuff is cool. Chapter 8 The Friendship Picture When we got back to school, Miss Hana took us to the art room. What a mess! There was more junk than ever in there. Her newspaper ball was bigger, too. It was almost as tall as me. Miss Hannah said she hoped the art we saw in the museum had inspired us to create art on our own. She passed out paper and pencils and said that today we were going to draw friendship pictures. What's a friendship picture? Emily asked. A friendship picture is a picture that two people draw together, she said. That sounds like fun, said Andrea. Can Emily and I work on a friendship picture together? We're best friends. Can I draw a picture with AJ? asked Ryan. No, said Miss Hannah. I want Andrea and AJ to work on a friendship picture together. Everybody laughed, even though Miss Hannah didn't say anything funny. That's because everybody knows that Andrea and I hate each other. Do I have to work with him? Andrea asked. Do I have to work with her? I asked. Yes said Miss Hannah. Andrea, you love butterflies, right? AJ, you love skateboards. Let's see the two of you draw a skateboarding butterfly. We got to work. Andrea drew the butterfly and the background. I drew a helmet on the butterfly, a skateboard under it, and a bunch of ramps and stuff. Our friendship picture actually came out pretty good. Miss Hana was so impressed at how well me and Andrea worked together that she went to get Miss Daisy. Hey, this is pretty cool, I said, holding up our friendship picture. Wow, agreed Andrea, taking the friendship picture. I'm going to take this home so my mom can put it up on the refrigerator. I want to take it home, I said, grabbing the friendship picture away from Andrea. My mom will want to put it up on our refrigerator. You hate art, AJ, Andrea said, grabbing the friendship picture back. Why should you get to take it home? Because I want it, that's why, I said. I grabbed the friendship picture back from Andrea. Only this time, Andrea didn't let go. She pulled on one side of the friendship picture. I pulled on the other side of the friendship picture. That's when our friendship picture ripped right down the middle. You ruined our friendship picture, Andrea shouted. I did not. You did. I hate you. I hate you back. I heard Miss Hannah and Miss Daisy coming down the hall toward the art room. Wait until you see how well AJ and Andrea are working together. Miss Hannah said as they walked into the room. You won't believe your eyes. Chapter 9 Mr. Klutz and the Secret Drawer You too, Miss Daisy said. Go to Mr. Klutz's office. Now. 
Ooh! I thought Andrea was going to kill me on the way to the principal's office. She was really mad. Andrea had never been to Mr. Klutz's office before. That's because she never does anything wrong. I can't believe I'm in trouble, Andrea said. It's all your fault, AJ. Relax, I said. I've been to the principal's office plenty of times. Mr. Klutz is a good guy. Mr. Klutz was sitting at his desk, talking on the phone when we arrived. He is not only the principal of the school, but he also has no hair at all. Once, he let everybody in our class touch his head. It was cool. Are we going to be punished? Andrea asked when Mr. Klutz hung up the phone. She was all nervous and talked in a quiet voice. I don't believe in punishing children, Mr. Klutz said. I believe in rewarding children for doing good things. Now, tell me, why can't you two get along? He says mean things to me, Andrea said. She thinks she knows everything, I said. He hates everything. Not everything, just you. Mr. Klutz leaned forward in his chair and rubbed his forehead. Grown-ups always rub their foreheads when they are thinking. I guess it must help their brains work better. When you get old, your brain doesn't work as good anymore. So you have to rub your forehead to get it going again. What can we do to solve this problem? Mr. Klutz asked. Kick AJ out of school. Kick Andrea out of school. I'm not kicking anyone out of school, Mr. Klutz said. The two of you are going to have to live with each other. In the same house? I asked. I thought you said you don't punish kids. Mr. Klutz laughed, even though I didn't say anything funny. Then he took a key and opened one of his desk drawers. The drawer was filled all the way up to the top with candy, chocolates, lollipops, caramels. He had like a whole candy shop in his drawer. I decided right there that I wanted to be a principal when I grow up. Would you like some of this? Mr. Klutz asked us. Andrea and I nodded our heads and licked our lips. Here's the deal. If you two can go a full day without fighting, I will give you each a candy bar tomorrow. How about two candy bars? I suggested. One candy bar each, Mr. Klutz said. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. I don't like Andrea. She doesn't like me either. But we both like candy bars. I would have to go one day without fighting with Andrea. One day wasn't so long. I could handle one day. Okay, Andrea and I said. Then we all shook on it. Shook hands, I mean. We didn't just start shaking. That would have been dumb. Chapter 10. The Big Stupid Art Contest. The next morning, I was on my best behavior. I was trying very hard to not say anything mean to Andrea. But it wasn't easy because she is so annoying. When Andrea gave an apple to Miss Daisy as a present, I wanted to say something mean, but I didn't. When Andrea showed everybody the A plus she got on the math quiz, I wanted to say something mean. 
but I didn't. When Andrea told Miss Daisy how pretty her hair looked, I wanted to say something mean, but I didn't. Andrea wasn't saying anything mean to me either. We both wanted that candy bar. Miss Daisy was happy that Andrea and I were being so nice to each other. When it came time for lunch, she sat us at the same table with Ryan and Michael and Emily. I traded Emily my banana, and she traded me her potato chips. Did you all bring in your stuff for the art contest? Asked Emily. Miss Hannah is going to judge the winner this afternoon. I had forgotten all about the stupid art contest. Michael said he made a statue out of toothpicks. Ryan said he made a paper mache head. Emily made a collage. Andrea made a mobile with hanging butterflies. Of course. I was the only one who didn't bring in anything. I hate art. Art is stupid. Did you see the art room? Andrea asked. When I brought my mobile in, the place was just a big mess. Of course, it's a big mess, Ryan said. Have you ever seen Miss Hanna throw anything away? She can't throw anything away," Michael said. "She doesn't have a garbage can." "That's exactly what I mean," Andrea said. "Miss Hanna just gets more and more stuff and never throws anything away. My mother is a psychologist. She helps people with their problems." And my mother says that people who can't throw anything away have a problem. I was going to tell Andrea that she was the one who had a problem, but I didn't. I wanted that candy bar. You know, everything isn't art. Andrea said, "Some things are garbage. Maybe Miss Hannah became an art teacher because." She couldn't throw anything away. She might be a sick, sick woman who needs help. I never thought of it that way," Ryan said. "We've got to help her," said Emily. "What can we do?" asked Michael. "I've got an idea," said Emily. "Why don't we sneak into the art room during recess and clean it up?" When Miss Hannah sees how neat and clean everything is, she will realize she has a problem. That's a great idea, Andrea said. It didn't sound like such a great idea to me. Cleaning things up was no fun at all. I don't like cleaning my room at home. I sure didn't want to clean up the art room. But I didn't want to get into an argument with Andrea either. If we had a fight, I wouldn't get my candy bar. After we finished lunch, the five of us snuck down the hall to the art room. Andrea was right; the place was a big mess. That's when I came up with the greatest idea in the history of the world. You know what I said? Instead of cleaning this place, we should mess it up even worse. Why would you want to do that? Emily asked. If we really mess it up bad, Miss Hannah will be so shocked that she will realize she has a problem. It sounded like a genius idea to me. Cleaning isn't fun at all, but messing things up. It's lots of fun. I'm not sure that's such a good idea, AJ. Andrea said. Sure, it's a good idea. I said. Trust me, AJ. It's not a good idea. Andrea thinks she knows everything. Well, 
She doesn't know everything. I'm not cleaning this place up, I said. I'd rather go outside for recess. You promised you would help, Andrea said. I did not. Did too. I hate you, AJ. That's when Andrea did the dumbest thing in the history of the world. She pushed me. If I knew she was going to do something dumb like that, I could have gotten ready for it. But how was I to know she was going to do something dumb like push me? My foot must have slipped or something because I fell backward. Right behind me was Miss Hannah's newspaper ball. When I fell backward, I landed on top of the ball. The ball rolled. I rolled on top of it. Watch out! Emily screamed. My foot hit Andrea's butterfly mobile that was hanging from the ceiling. The butterfly mobile landed on my head. On the floor behind the ball were a bunch of cans of paint. I tried to get out of the way, but I couldn't. When I hit the ground, I hit the paint first. You stupid dumbhead! Andrea shouted. You crushed my butterflies. You pushed me into them. I did not. You fell on them on purpose. I got up off the floor. Paint and butterflies were all over me. Red, yellow, blue, green. It was cool. Hey, look! I said. Art is everywhere. Ryan and Michael laughed. How can you make jokes at a time like this? Andrea said. You ruined my mobile. Now I won't win the contest. You're going to be in big trouble, AJ. Emily said. Somebody's coming. Ryan said. Everybody, shut up. That's when the door opened. Miss Hannah and Mister Klutz came in. I was standing there with paint and Andrea's stupid butterflies hanging all over me. What's the meaning of this? Mister Klutz asked. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I had to think fast. It's performance art, I said. Everybody looked at me for like a million hundred seconds. Yeah, Andrea finally said, "It's friendship performance art. AJ and I made it together." Miss Hannah walked around me and looked me over. One of the butterflies slid down my head and stopped at the end of my nose. "It's Connecticut friendship performance art," I said. "I think it's fabulous," Miss Hannah said. It is so very creative. I believe the winners of the art contest are Andrea and Deje. Everybody cheered and clapped. Mister Klutz reached into his jacket pocket and pulled out two candy bars. I'm so pleased to see the two of you are getting along so well together. He said, "I promised you each." A little something, if you could go a day without fighting. Here is your prize. Congratulations. The candy bar tasted great. Maybe Art isn't so stupid after all. After it was all over, I still hated Andrea. Andrea still hated me. Miss Hannah still had a big problem with collecting garbage. I said. I would try to be nice to Andrea. She said she would try to be nice to me, and we both said we would try to help Miss Hannah with her problem. But it won't be easy.